Well, thank you, uh, Jim. And uh, my name is Dr. Keisha Cook. For those of you who I have not met, you know, a couple of people on, uh, on Zoom, but I can't see your faces in the room. Uh, so I hope to meet you as soon as I'm on campus in the spring. Uh, but um, I, I look forward to it. Um, so today I just wanted to, one, be able to, uh, you know, meet with, uh, get familiar with some of the students, whether you're undergraduate or graduate student, and then also um, do an informal presentation uh, with regard to a conference that um, I will be hosting along with uh, Dr. Carter and Dr. Uh, Zanozzi. And, uh, and that'll be in February. So I'll talk a little bit about the conference later, but um, since I can't see you all, I won't, um, I won't ask the question of, uh, if you're undergraduates or graduate students, but, uh, and also I wanted to know how many people have actually presented at a conference and who hasn't, just so we can fill out the audience um, uh, for today. Um, but either, either way, this will be helpful. If you have presented at a conference before, um, you know, you can get some, some different types of hints. And then if you're still new to the process, if you're undergrad, um, then uh, we can also talk with you about it. Is everything good inside? Yeah, and yeah, keep, let me, we were trying to get you to get oh, away. Perfect. We have like five people here in attendance. Uh, mostly. Okay, nice. That's perfect, just to see faces. It's so good to see faces. <laughs> Um, so today I just wanted to have an informal conversation and uh, so for the conference, which I'll talk about, uh, we developed a set of videos that are on YouTube uh, for you and we're just going to go through them. They're only, they're all maybe two to three minutes long and then in between each set of videos I will um, have a question and answer period and then also if you have presented a poster before, then it would be good to, uh, you know, just give your your two cents, give um, any hints that you might want to add to what we what we came up with and created for this posted workshop today. Um, but again, informal, and I uh, just want to give tips and prepare you all for conferences, especially since we'll probably be able to be in person again. So this will be helpful if you have presented and haven't um, done it in person. Um, so if we are good with that, I'm going to go ahead and start the first set of videos. And um, Jim, you'll have to let me know if you can hear them. Okay. Oh, um, and could you allow me to share, please? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, we were just kind of rearranging the room so you can see us. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, no, that right. works. That works. <laughs> oh, now I can see you all. Hi. <laughs> there we go. So you should be able to share that. Okay, perfect. Let's try this out. Great. So again, I'll do the first two sets of videos and then I'll pause and we'll have a just a question answer period in between. All right, here we go. Welcome to the Math for All in New Orleans poster workshop video series. My name is Addie and I use she, her pronouns. I'm a senior math major at Tulane University. And a fun fact about me is that I laser cut Sorry these eye earrings myself. My name is Riley and I use she, her pronouns. I'm a senior at Tulane University in New Orleans, double majoring in mathematics and computer science. A fun fact about me is that I play jazz and classical guitar. What is math for all in New Orleans? Math for All in New Orleans has the purpose of fostering inclusivity in mathematics by holding talks and discussions in both research and education. This conference will be targeted to undergraduate and graduate students, postdocs, and faculty members from all institutions in New Orleans, 
and provide a friendly, open environment to learn and discuss mathematics. The conference will be taking place March 6th and 7th, 2021. For more information, you can visit our website. So what is a scientific poster? A scientific poster is a way to present research or academic ideas as an oral presentation with a visual aid. They are more informal and interactive than a traditional slideshow presentation. What is a poster session? The Math for All poster session is a place for undergrads to present interesting ideas in mathematics. Typically, a poster session is an avenue for students or researchers to present their research project. However, at Math for All, the poster session welcomes posters on any interesting topic in mathematics. All undergraduate attendees at Math for All are encouraged to create a poster, even if they've never worked on a formal research project before. Creating a poster can be a bit overwhelming, as Addie and I know from prior experience, so we're going to walk you through all the steps. Tune in for the rest of our video series, where we will cover how to find a mentor and pick a topic, poster design principles, software that can be used for making your poster, writing an elevator speech, and what to expect at the poster session. In this section of the Math for All in New Orleans poster workshop video series, we will be talking about how to find a topic and a mentor for your poster. First, let's discuss how to pick a topic. At Math for All, possible topics you could present on a poster could be a presentation or extension of a research project, a class project, a research topic overview, or a theorem or application of mathematics that you find interesting. Now let's investigate where you could find ideas and information. To find an idea, you can think about something that came up in one of your favorite math classes that you thought was interesting, or you could explore what other math people find intriguing on YouTube, such as Number File or Three Blue, One Brown. If you want to look for research ideas from current mathematicians, you can search for research papers on a website, such as MathSciNet, Google Scholar, and Archive, or visit your favorite professor's personal pages to learn more about what research they are doing. If this seems overwhelming, it's okay to go to a mentor first and ask them for ideas. Finally, let's talk about how to pick a mentor for your topic. Doing a research project or writing a poster for the first time all by yourself can seem intimidating. Finding a mentor to help you formulate ideas and write them up can really help smooth out the process. Good candidates for possible mentors are grad students, postdocs who are people who have recently finished their PhDs, and professors. You may wish to collaborate on a poster with one of your peers. When making a list of potential mentors, consider the following questions. What classes did you enjoy? Who from your department works in those areas? Who do you already have a relationship with? And is there a formal mentorship program at your institution? If you really like one of your classes, you could approach that professor. If a grad student was a teaching assistant for your class, you could maybe ask them. And you can also ask grad students what they are working on and how to get involved. You can reach out to the people on your list of potential mentors by email or office hours if you're currently in their class. Here's an example. Dear so-and-so, I am planning on attending Math for All in New Orleans on March 6th and 7th and want to work on a project that I can present at the poster session. Would you be willing to help mentor me in this pursuit? I really enjoyed our topology class and I would love to work on a project related to those concepts. Do you have any ideas for where I can get started? I'd be happy to meet with you to discuss this opportunity and available resources. Thank you, Riley. Do include your mentor and collaborators names and references for your project. Do use your mentor as a resource for building ideas and finding resources. Do keep reaching out to potential mentors if the person you contacted says no, they are too busy or never responds. Do reach out to other undergrads going to the conference if you would be interested in collaborating or peer reviewing with them. Do Google other undergraduate math posters for inspiration. 
Don't be scared to approach people. Your department is invested in you. The worst they can do is say no. Don't disrespect other people's time or expect them to be significantly involved in your project. You still have to do most of the work. We hope that you feel confident now to pick a topic and find a mentor. Tune in to our next video about poster design. Right. So um, when we develop this uh, poster workshop, uh, this is, we're actually going into our third year of the conference. And uh, when we developed the workshop, since we were, since the conference itself was geared towards undergraduates or graduate students who had not presented at a, a conference before, uh, we collected actually in the survey um, questions on our poster session um, that involved, you know, how, how did you feel throughout the process of, um, of the poster session? Were you prepared? Did you enjoy your topic? How did you select your topic and things? So when we were putting together this workshop, we, we thought about all of these responses from the students. And I think this is very helpful because um, if you, I know that there is an undergraduate research symposium at Clemson. Um, this is, you know, separate conference, but um, when you're getting in front of a group of anyone, a group of people, and presenting, you want to, you know, be excited about your topic, be knowledgeable about your topic, but also find something that you enjoy. And that all comes with um, some of the things that Riley and uh, Adriana were, were explaining, uh, because uh, that will just uh, help you develop more of your, your research experience, your mathematic research experience. Um, so, I'm going to open up for quick questions there about um, selecting a mentor or um, let me know actually how many of you are already doing research um, and have maybe a mentor and, and who hasn't. So I think, um, I think the room, oh, there we go. It's, it's unmuted now. So how about uh, just like maybe a raise of hands. How many of you are doing uh, undergraduate research already with a professor <clears throat> or a graduate research or student? Awesome, okay. And so, so a couple that, that haven't. Um, how many, so second question, how many of you have presented a poster or a talk in person, not virtually, in person? Okay, awesome. So hopefully some of the, the tips that are coming up will help um, those of you that have not presented in person. It can be a little different in person versus uh, online. And we figured that out because the first year uh, the conference was in person, the second year it was virtual and there was a, a learning gap there um, between the students who, were, who had experience presenting in person versus never presenting at all. Um, but any questions so far about finding a mentor or um, anyone want to give hints or add to those suggestions that uh, Riley and, and Adriana gave? Well, I personally love the part about you know, if the person doesn't respond, <laughs> move on. So that's, a, that's an academic warning, I guess. I have <laughs> the poster. So, so it's not really an expectation that this is necessarily new research. It could be just explaining some concept or some interesting thing like that, uh, an insight to something, is that correct? Correct, and that's just for this specific conference, um, but you know, you can apply the rest of the tips to any conference that you go to. Um, but for this conference, um, our poster session is geared towards um, students who are new to mathematics, mathematical research and, uh, you know, just learning how to give a, a poster presentation in this environment before you're thrown into your um, your specific area conferences, you know, your regional conferences or your large conferences like the, the joint math meetings or AMS or SIAM um, meetings. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. So a little background uh, before I go to the second set of, of videos. Um, the conference was founded at Tulane University uh, 2020 was our first conference. And 
Um, it was founded for the purposes of that they mentioned, but a, a welcoming environment, number one, and then two, um, an inclusive environment. So, um, you know, we wanted to bring together the universities in New Orleans at the time because all of the universities were kind of separate from each other and there was a, a larger mathematics community that we wanted to bring together. Um, and uh, so now that the founders of the original conference uh, in including myself as well. We are, are all at new universities and we are interested in hosting um, satellite conferences. So we'll have the main conference in person in New Orleans at Tulane University and the satellite conferences will all be in person at the respective universities. Um, so before, so since this is a good time to show this, let me share my screen again, um, but there'll be some really great speakers so that the plenary talks will be broadcast live at Clemson, um, but we they will be in person at Tulane. And so those of you who want would like to participate and there'll be more information sent out. Um, it will be in person and uh, Dr. Carter and Dr. Uh, Zanozzi will be um, working to host that at the university. So this is in February of 2020, it's February 5th and 6th. So we'll watch the plenary talks live, but then we'll have our own poster session. So the poster session will be with your own peers and you know faculty that want to stop by and also um, view your academic or mathematical research. And um, again, we, we just encourage a, an inclusive and a welcoming environment um, as opposed to just being thrown into into conferencing at a, a larger scale. So let me come back to Zoom now. All right. And so, so the speakers will be in math um, research and then also education, math education. So it, there'll be a, a wide variety of talks. There'll also be some, uh, some workshops and I believe the workshops may be virtual. So if you are interested in um, attending some of the workshops, we'll have a virtual version of those also, but all together at Clemson. And again, we'll send out more information um, later. All right, so let's go to the next set of videos, if there's no questions there. All right, let's see. In this section of the Math for All in New Orleans poster workshop video series, we will be talking about how to design a poster. First, we will discuss basic design principles. Let's start with navigation and flow. People read top to bottom, left to right, so most posters have several columns. As an example, in column one, you'd have an intro, background, and motivation. In column two, you'd have your methods, and in column three, you'd have your results, a conclusion, a future work section, and references. If you are not standing by your poster, a stranger should be able to tell what order it should be read in. Next, we will visit fonts. Do not use more than two font types and try to use professional fonts, so no Comic Sans. Now let's talk about colors. Try to keep your poster to two to three main colors. If you have plots or figures that have a lot of color on them, keep the background white. Choose colors that complement each other and aren't obnoxiously bright. A popular choice is the colors of your school. Now let's talk about the balance between words and pictures. This can be tricky, but it's very important. In a poster session, no one is going to read every word on your poster. You don't have to write in paragraph form. Bullets are easier to read. Just make sure they are all formatted consistently. And try to tell the story primarily through visuals. Use bolding, italics, and underline to highlight keywords and takeaways. Make sure interesting photos are large and attract the eye to entice people to come to your poster. And make sure to leave blank space so the poster does not seem too crowded. 
Now we will discuss how to pick a good title. A couple options for formatting your title are title case and sentence case. In title case, each of the words of the title are capitalized, whereas in sentence case, only the first word of the title is capitalized. Be consistent throughout your poster with the way you format the title and your headings, and maybe ask your mentor which formatting you should use. Make sure to use keywords from your research area in your title. And again, you can ask your mentor what branch of math your poster is on and what keywords are in that branch. Delete extra words from your title that don't add meaning. A bad example of a title with extra words is an investigation of symmetries of wallpaper groups. A better version of a title for the same project would be wallpaper group symmetries. Finally, pick something that tells the reader what kind of work you are doing, also known as something that would cause them to stop and look at your poster. Do label all the figures and graphs, especially your axes and units. Do make sure you understand the poster size restrictions of the conference. For Math for All, the limits are three feet tall by four feet wide. Do ask your friends to review poster drafts for typos and layout. Don't simply reference an equation or theorem from another work by Theorem 3 in Andrew's 1971 paper. Posters should be self-contained. Write down everything for the audience so they don't need to look it up. Don't try to fit your entire project on the poster. Summarize the main takeaways and don't worry about writing all the rigorous details of your work. Don't use too small of a font size. Even the smallest fonts on your poster should be readable from four to six feet away. Don't put anything on your poster that you would not be able to fully explain. This includes figures and equations. That's it. We hope you can start to visualize your poster now. Tune in for our next video about how to actually create it using software. section of the Math for All in New Orleans Poster Workshop video series, we will be talking about how to make your poster using software. First, we will explore what software to use. There are different softwares that can be used to create a poster. One common software used for mathematics posters and mathematics research papers and presentations in general is LaTeX, although there are also ways to create a poster in PowerPoint. LaTeX is a text markup language that formats equations, figures, and text nicely and can generate PDFs. You can download LaTeX on your computer, but an easy way to get started is to use the online LaTeX editor called Overly. It is a good idea to learn LaTeX, but this can be overwhelming at first, so definitely reach out for help in getting started. While you are learning, the Overleaf website also has lots of great tips and examples. Let's start by finding a template. To find a template, do a Google search for a LaTeX scientific poster template. Select one that appears to have the correct orientation and size of your poster, although this can be modified later if need be. When you find a template that you like, download it into Overleaf. Now let's see how we can modify the template. Near the top of the code, you will see a line that looks like this. Landscape signifies that the poster is in landscape orientation. A zero paper tells us the size of the poster. You can look up the names on the internet for different size posters. When you see a command that looks like this, it is creating the section titles of your poster and signifying where they are placed on the poster. You can edit the name in the brackets to change the title of the section. To change the colors of your poster, look for the part of the source code that looks somewhat like this. If the template is documented well, it should be easy to figure out where to change the colors for different objects. Some colors are already defined in LaTeX. If you want to use a custom color, you can define one using this command. 
you just fill in the RBG values of the color that you want. Now we will look at how to actually put text, equations, and figures into your poster. To write text, simply start typing text into the source code. To add an equation or variable into your text, you need to use math mode. To start typing in math mode, enter a dollar sign into the text. When you've finished writing your equation, put another dollar sign to end math mode. If you want your equation to stand out from the text and be put on its own line, you can use display style math mode. To start display style math mode, type double dollar signs, then type your equation, and then end it with two more dollar signs. When you want to check the output of your source code, you click the recompile button. This will generate the PDF of your poster. Next to the recompile button is an output log. Here you will find any errors in your source code that may be preventing Overleaf from compiling the source code correctly. If you want to add a figure, you must first import the figure into Overleaf in an acceptable format, usually .pdf, .jpeg, and .png files work well. Then you use this command. To set the size of the figure, in this case 0.98 the width of the space available, set width equal to 0.98 slash line width, and add the file name and folder path of the imported figure. To add a caption to your figure, use this command. LaTeX has lots of predefined commands for common math symbols. For example, if you want to write an inequality sign, you can use the command slash leq, or if you want to write the symbol for beta, you can use slash beta. If you want to write a math symbol in math mode but are unsure of what the command is, the easiest way to find out is to Google it. For example, how do I type a fraction in LaTeX? There are plenty of resources on the internet for specific commands, although be aware that some may require you to add a package into your source code. To add a package, type slash use package and insert the package name. To add references and citations to your poster, you will need to create a .bib file. Here, you can load the information for your references. This is an example. The first part is the label for the reference. When you want to use the reference in your text, use the command slash cite and put the name for the reference. Use the commands slash bibliography to add a bibliography to your poster. This will use the information from the .bib file to compile a bibliography of all the references that were cited somewhere in the document. One easy way to populate the .bib file is to find your references on Google Scholar where there is an option to generate the bib tech information for the article. Do learn LaTeX. It is a valuable skill to have as a mathematician. Do Google answers for when you get stuck. No one actually knows how to do everything. They just look it up. Do edit the template with colors to make it your own. Don't be afraid to ask for help. If you can't figure out how to do something, like align an image properly, ask your friends or your mentor. That's it. Start mastering law tech. Tune in for our next video about how to prepare an elevator speech for the poster session. Awesome. So, oh, sorry about that. All right, so, so that was a lot of information for LaTeX or LaTeX, um, but you can also use PowerPoint as well. It just depends on um, how many, really how many equations you have on your poster and the different types of uh, formatting that you enjoy. Um, so I wouldn't say either or is easier or harder, but they're both doable for, for uh, for posters. And I know that uh, Clemson has PowerPoint um, templates that with the school colors that if you want to make a poster with um, Clemson on it. Um, and then you can also change the colors, of course, in LaTeX to make them specific to the university. But with all of those tips that were there, um, any questions about um, preparing your poster on LaTeX?
and I'm not sure if she mentioned it, but a standard size for a poster is about 36 by 48, whether that's horizontal or vertical. So towards the beginning, um, can you hear me? I actually turned the game down on my mic. Yes. Right. Yeah. Towards the beginning, they mentioned try to use a lot of images. And I was wondering if you would have advice for people who are focusing more on the abstract side of things and might not have images to work with. How would they approach yeah, that? How would they make their poster more eye-catching for that? Ah, that's a good question. Um, I was thinking maybe uh, diagrams or more images in your results section. Um, maybe uh, diagrams that are explaining how the, for instance, if you're in, uh, I guess, well, graph theory has a lot of graphs, obviously, um, but maybe um, if you're in algebra, you could, instead of images, write out your equations. So the things that you are, the topics you're trying to prove, maybe it would be good to have the big concepts uh, laid out throughout your poster. Um, instead of an image or a figure, um, you would just have the most important equations of your theorems instead of writing your theorem in paragraph form or uh, your proof in paragraph form. Um, but yeah, that's a good question. Oh, and, you know, I wanted to add for my two cents that the learning the LaTeX thing is great advice. Uh, and, and actually the best way to learn it, I think is to kind of steal. Right. Whenever you see somebody else's LaTeX file, steal the source code and just kind of mimic. That's kind of the best way. But it, once you get it, and even a guy like me, I I picked it up pretty quickly, and it is super convenient once you know how to do it. So. Yes, and then it's easy to manipulate. So once you have your the the way you like to design your poster. You, you have that set up once you learn, and then you can easily change that depending on whatever project you're working on from now on, now until the end of your math career, whenever that may be. Um, <laughs> hopefully a, a while. <laughs> yeah, so definitely. Um, and I'll post the link to the YouTube uh, in the chat after, after the last set of videos, um, which is next. Um, but. Uh, I'm not sure how well you can see some of the commands that they were talking about, so I will make sure I post those, uh, the link for you. All right. All right, so, okay, last set of videos, and then we'll talk again. In this section of the Math for All in New Orleans poster workshop video series, we will be talking about how to prepare an elevator speech. So what is an elevator speech? An elevator speech is what you start with when someone approaches you and asks you about your poster. Be prepared to introduce yourself and give the gist of your poster in one minute or less. Next, let's discuss what should be in your elevator speech. First, who are you? Include your name, year in school, and what institution you're from. Next, what did you do? What makes this work interesting? And finally, why should someone care to read your poster? Highlight the main points in your elevator speech without being technical. And then if the person expresses interest and asks questions after your initial introduction, then you can dive into more technical details. Here is an example elevator speech. Hi, I'm Addie. Your poster looks really interesting. Could you tell me more about it? Hi, Addie. I'm Riley. I would love to tell you more. What's your background? Sure. I'm a senior math major, and I mostly have experience with pure mathematics. That's great. I'm also a senior at Tulane University. For this project, I worked with Professor Scott McKinley and our collaborator, Professor Christine Payne, to develop statistical methods to categorize different types of particle movement in cells. Scientists can use techniques such as fluorescence microscopy 
to peek beneath the surface of living cells, and to track particles. There's a lot of diversity in the way that these particles move. And each experiment can generate hundreds of XY trajectories, so scientists need a way to automate the categorization of these particles into different movement types. In this work, we developed a first pass of that, using statistical measures and machine learning to categorize different types of movement. We have validated this on simulated data and we're working on applying it to our collaborators data to help her uncover new insights and answer questions about differences in the relative proportions of the different types of movement in the cells. So what are you interested in learning more about? That sounds really cool. How did you construct the simulated data? Great question. To create the data, we used a stochastic differential equation to simulate each of the movement types. Do gesture to figures on your poster during your elevator speech. Do be engaging and excited. Do be confident. Don't just start reciting equations out loud. Make sure they are written down so that your audience can follow along. That's it. Draft and rehearse your elevator speech. Tune in for our next video for what to expect from the poster session. One second. section of the Math for All in New Orleans poster workshop video series, we will be talking about what to expect at the poster session. First, we will address poster printing and traveling with a poster. Math for All and other conferences will have opportunities to apply for funding for poster printing. You also may be able to ask your department for funding. Be on the lookout for these since printing a poster at FedEx or elsewhere can be a little expensive. Make sure to check deadlines for poster funding. For Math for All, if you are approved for funding, the posters will be printed by the conference organizers. Be sure to check submission deadlines. In this case, you wouldn't need to travel with one. However, if you do need to travel with one for other conferences, you can take posters on planes and store them in the overhead bins. You can ask a flight attendant to help you find room if the flight is full. We would recommend purchasing or borrowing a poster carrying tube to help protect your poster from spills or bending. If you want to be really fancy, you could print your poster on fabric instead of paper, fold it in your suitcase, and iron it for the conference if needed. This is a good option because it's less annoying for traveling with the poster, and if you're using it frequently, it can be worth it, but otherwise it might be expensive. Now let's move into talking about the poster session itself. The poster session is typically set up in a larger room with posters along the perimeter or in rows hanging on a poster board or attached to a vertical surface. Sometimes the organizers will collect the posters ahead of time and hang the poster for you. Sometimes you have to hang it yourself. Binder clips or tape are typically provided. Once the posters are set up and the students are standing with them, other conference attendees will wander freely around the poster space, stopping at ones they're interested in. It is important to gauge your audience and speak accordingly. Ask a person who approaches you what their background is. This is especially important for multidisciplinary or large conferences. To prepare, think about how you would present to another undergrad who maybe hasn't taken advanced math courses, or to a grad student, or a professor, someone in your same research area, or someone who is not experienced in math or academia at all. Also, think about how poster design will enhance your speaking and vice versa. 
identify ready-to-go diagrams or equations you can point to. You may also want to bring a flashcard cheat sheet of data and information in case someone asks. Examples include if this is an ongoing project and you have unpublished data that is interesting but not yet ready to be presented formally on a poster, or if you have data that didn't make it into the poster because it was submitted before you had time to add it. You may also wish to jot down any informal references that you could direct someone to if they were interested in learning more. For example, an article in the news that mentions this type of research. Do practice beforehand with peers and your mentor. Do be confident. This is your work. You have become a mini expert on this topic. That being said, don't be afraid to say that you are working on understanding one thing better. If you say you know something that you don't actually know, it will look much worse than saying that you don't know it. Do appear friendly and be present. You want people to approach you and your poster. Do ask if people have questions. Pause in between sections and look for them to nod their head to indicate understanding. Do invite people you meet at the conference to come see your poster during the poster session. Do bring water. You will hopefully be talking a lot. Do see other posters if you are interested in them, but keep an eye to see if anyone stops to read your poster. You are free to move around, but don't leave your poster unattended for long periods of time. For larger conferences, you may have a set time where you're supposed to stand by your poster and a set time where you're supposed to explore other posters. Don't get defensive if someone brings up other questions or papers. Don't be on your phone if no one is at your poster. Don't be afraid of silence. Some people need time to think of what question they want to ask. Congrats! We've made it to the end of the poster workshop video series. We hope that you have learned a lot and feel comfortable and confident in preparing a poster for Math for All in New Orleans. We are excited to see the posters you create and we hope to see you there. Awesome. All right, so two of the most important things from uh, those two videos, I think, are one, knowing your audience and then uh, just being prepared and to talk about your poster. Uh, if you notice at the beginning of today, I wanted to know my audience so I know what kind of uh, questions to think about that might come up and then also know what level um, all of you are at. Um, so that was it. that's always important, especially when you're presenting your research. Um, I think Addie mentioned that, you know, there may be people in your research area and there may be people that are outside of your research area who are still interested in your topic, even though uh, they might, they may or may not be familiar with it. So uh, you want to always be prepared for the different types of questions you will get, um, depending on the audience, as opposed to just answering questions uh, specifically, you know, uh, straightforward deep into your research area type answers. Um, and then uh, also um, just preparing, uh, preparing uh, for, for being in that space um, in terms of you know, being, being welcoming when you're, when you're at your poster or inviting people to come speak with you. But um, again, knowing that you're the expert in the room at that moment and any kind of questions, um, that you receive, you either have an answer or it's future work. So don't be afraid to say, oh, I haven't thought about that yet. Um, I can, I will add that and I'll start thinking about that question if it is something that is interested in the direction that you're interested in taking your research. So I'll stop and open the floor to you all. Uh, any questions or additional comments? Nice. Well, um, I, I hope that you all enjoyed some of these, uh, these tips and, and hints for the poster session. Of course, a lot of it was geared towards the conference specifically because they, you know, we prepared it for this conference, but uh, all of the tips that they mentioned can be used um, outside at any conference that you attend. And I do want to mention that the satellite conference uh, this year in February will have an option for you to do a short talk or a poster. So if you want to, you want that experience doing a poster and you're not in 
in the room with experts yet at a large conference or you know you want a more a smaller community of your peers to practice uh, presenting your research with um, we'll have that option for you so um, stay on the lookout for information it'll be out soon probably around uh, november ish time frame um, and again that's in february uh, so let me put this link in the chat oh i guess those of you in the room will not have the link but <laughs> i will um send it to Jim and maybe he can send out just a post uh, a post email about the the workshop um, yeah I do have one one kind of question um, so you say that you know the different conferences like like the math for all might be a little bit different than this uh, is there a way that students can find out so so maybe a student sees another conference on the horizon and says, right. well, you know, I've got this project or I've got this thing I worked on in class or whatever, and they want to know if it's appropriate for this conference, what mm -hmm. would you recommend about them finding out? Yeah, um, so I think um, in that case, if you know, for any conference, if I understand the question correctly, so you have a project and you're just trying to figure out if you're a type of uh, presentation or your topic is going to fit into that conference. Um, now, with uh, with COVID, there's actually a lot of uh, archives. There's more archives than than have been previously before we were in person all the time. So now I think you have the opportunity to actually look into the conference and look at what kind of uh, presentations were presented the previous year and the types of uh, sessions that they'll have. Um, you know, if you are starting out as an undergrad, you want to look for conferences that are that are are open to undergraduates. Number one, I think all of the conferences are going to be uh, open to undergraduates. But look for the sessions that are for younger researchers and newer researchers, as opposed to uh, just the the um, higher level research. Uh, workshops or sessions at that at that conference but um it's i know that 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 is something that is difficult and then also talking with uh, people who have attended these conferences before so use your mentor also as a good resource for finding out um you know if i wanted to if i had a, a class project that had a good result and it was interesting it's not necessarily maybe um new resource or, or publishable research, but it's something that was interesting to me and I just wanna practice doing a poster session, um, you know, joint math meetings type um, undergraduate poster sessions or, or just poster sessions um, are usually geared towards um, research such as that. And then if you are more advanced and you are you know, a graduate student or an undergraduate and you have publishable research and, and you're, you're ready to go uh, be in the room with the the big researchers, the top researchers, then then do so. Um, and you know your your topic is you're you're the expert on on your topic. So uh, just be open to talking about it and accepting feedback. Thank you. Uh, other questions? Yes. Uh, Less of a question, more something I kind of like to add as far as the technical details of posters go. Um, if you're putting images on your poster, make sure that they are either vector images or a high enough resolution that they will scale up to the print size. But you see this a lot with the university logos, especially when you pixelate it beyond belief when you look at the actual physical poster. Uh, if you're using WazeHack, then it will automatically vectorize all of your text for you. It will automatically vectorize all of your little boxes. So that's really nice. But uh, in general, be careful for anything for research. Yes, that's really good. Thank you for that. That is very important. Okay, and, uh, one more technical thing. Uh, if you're working at some kind of image manipulation program, like I do my post in Photoshop because I'm a crazy person, but uh, make sure that it is in CMYK color and not RGB for printing purposes. Do not trust the printer to switch it for you. Good to know. So do you do a lot of image processing type research? I went to art school before I did math. Okay, awesome. <laughs> well, that creativity will, will help in mathematics. So that's, that's awesome. <laughs> 
any other uh, questions or comments? Nice. What's well, the, oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, thank you all for coming out today. I know it's informal, but um, I hope you learned something new today, even if you've had a little bit experience with uh, presenting already. So, so thank you again, Jim, for having me and thanks for coming. Thank you so much. Uh, well, Bye. everybody, thanks for coming to my club. This is our first experiment and being live this semester. Uh, we might have pizza next week. We shall see. Uh, and thank you again uh, for uh, talking to us. Uh, it was very informative. And I hope I can get you to talk again next semester. Yes, definitely. And that will be research based. Uh, so that will be actually a little bit along the lines of what Riley was doing in her example presentation. So uh, stochastic processes and um, looking at organelles inside of cells. So that'll be next semester. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Everybody, I hope you have a great weekend and we will catch you next week. Bye.